guys, welcome back to another Adobe Illustrator tutorial. First of all, thank you so much for all of the love on June's video, which was my first Adobe Illustrator video where I showed you my process for vectorizing my Procreate artwork. There were a lot of you who were really excited about that video and excited to finally have a way to vectorize the artwork that you do in Procreate so you can get the best of both worlds, that kind of hands-on drawing experience that Procreate on the iPad gives you and also the flexibility of vector files and working inside in Adobe Illustrator. Illustrator can definitely be one of those apps or programs that when you open it up and you're a beginner, it can feel really intimidating and that there is a massive learning curve. So I'm very excited to share another quick and easy tutorial for something that gets amazing results inside an Adobe Illustrator and you don't need to be a master or an expert of Adobe Illustrator to actually use this tool that I'm going to show you today. Today I'm going to show you how I create repeating patterns inside an Adobe Illustrator and just how easy it is to create repeating pattern templates inside an Adobe Illustrator. And not only that, I'm also gonna show you how you can create a pattern in Illustrator and then apply it to a set of artboards to create a matching phone, desktop, and tablet wallpaper, which is exactly what I do when I'm creating patterned wallpapers for my Patreon members. Let's dive in, let's open up Adobe Illustrator and get our workspace set up and ready for creating our first repeating pattern. So inside an Adobe Illustrator, we're gonna go ahead and create a new file and we're gonna create a new artboard and workspace for ourselves. With repeating patterns, I personally prefer to create and work on square artboards inside an Adobe Illustrator just because it gives me a square space to help me visualize the repeat before I go into creating the repeat. So I'm gonna create an, art, an artboard that is 1080 pixels or 1080 points by 1080. I'm gonna just create one artboard for the purpose of this tutorial. I'm gonna get be creating one pattern. But if I was planning to create more patterns for a collection, I would usually have like three to six artboards inside in my workspace where I would kind of collect my different elements in order to build the different patterns in that collection. We don't need any bleed for our artboards for patterns because our patterns are going to be seamless and repeating and we definitely don't want them to have a bleed. And the last thing that I'm gonna do for this artboard is I'm gonna change it to RGB color mode because the pattern that I'm creating today, I wanna use it to create a wallpaper for desktop, phone, and tablet devices. So RGB is the color mode we use when we are creating things that we're going to use on a screen. If I was creating a pattern that I intended to have printed on a product or on some fabric or for a supplier or a client or a collection or whatever it was, I would use CMYK because that is the color mode we need set when we intend to print our patterns. All of my other settings I'm happy with, so I'm going to go ahead and click create and Adobe is going to open up our workspace with our square artboard. So I've gone ahead and gathered some options for creating my pattern today. These are from artwork that I've already created and for creating your pat pattern all you've got to do is bring in some artwork from other Adobe Illustration files that you have or from Procreate and vectorizing, vectorize them using the method that I shared in my last video and then collect a couple of little elements that you wanna use in your pattern. I think we're gonna keep it very simple for this first pattern and we're gonna use some of these flowers. I really love this daisy flower here. So I'm gonna bring that over to my square workspace. And I like that I have a couple of different variations of it, some with leaves and some without leaves. So I'm gonna bring those over here as well. Okay, so I have gone ahead and laid out some of my flower elements inside in my little pattern square. The base for my pattern is ready to go. My elements are laid out. You'll notice I also changed some of the colors of the flowers because as I started to put the pattern together, I kind of liked this idea of doing like these creams and these butter yellows and these kind of brighter, more mustard yellow colors and this kind of summery citrusy palette. So that's kind of what I went for. And now I'm ready to use the Adobe Illustrator pattern to to build my pattern and this is where the fun part is and the magic happens. So I'm gonna drag and drop across my artboard and select all of the different elements in my pattern. So that will grab all of them and pick them up and select them. And then I'm gonna go up to 
file and I'm going to slide on over here to object and I'm going to do, go down here to the section of the object menu that says pattern and I'm going to click make. Immediately you will see the screen populate with the repeat of this pattern that I've created. If I zoom out, I can see a sample of the pattern repeated. It's not perfect yet because there's a couple of settings that I need to change. First of all, to bring the bounding box closer together. At the moment, the pattern tile bounds around the edge of the last element and repeats like that. So the first thing that I want to do is I want to make the sides of my pattern tile to match the artboard that I was originally working on. So I'm going to click on this little uh, icon up here, which is my pattern tile tool. And I am going to drag the sides of my pattern tile down to match the edges of my artboard. Now my next job is I need to go in closer to my original pattern square and start moving things around and resizing them a little bit because they're too close together. So even though I have resized my pattern tile to the size of my original artboard, I am going to give myself a little bit more space to work on because things are overlapping a lot at the moment. Okay, so the first kind of major issue I see is these two flowers up here are overlapping. So we're gonna exit out the pattern tile tool and we're gonna start picking up these elements. So one of these flowers needs to move. So in order to move the flower, I think I'm gonna shift over some of these leaves, rotate them around a little bit. And then I can kind of bring this flower up and this one over and just start tweaking the elements inside in the main pattern tile always kind of zooming in and out to see what does this look like as a repeat as the pattern continues what parts of this pattern do i like or what parts of this pattern are maybe have too much negative space in between them or look too similar so for example i personally when i zoom out i don't like how the leaves are repeating because all three of the leaves are kind of clumped together and it just doesn't look as good i also see there's like a lot of negative space happening in some parts of the pattern and then other parts of the pattern the flowers are really clustered together so i need to kind of spend a little minute tweaking and moving things around until I'm happy with how the layout looks. Okay, I've done some moving and tweaking and resizing and putting things in a different order and I'm actually really happy with the spacing and how the preview looks. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to my pattern options and I'm gonna give my pattern a name. I'm gonna call this Summer Garden because it's giving very summer garden vibes. And then I'm gonna just click enter and save and click up here to click done. Now over here in my swatches panel, I'll notice that there's a new swatch has been added and that is my pattern swatch. So if I click on that swatch and then I click my rectangle tool, now when I create a rectangle, it's going to fill it with my pattern. If I create a rectangle that is a different color, for example, I can then also click over here to fill it with my pattern. Now it's the time to apply this pattern swatch to our wallpaper for a phone, desktop, and tablet. And I'm going to show you how I create matching wallpapers for phone, desktop, and tablet inside in one Adobe Illustrator file. So we're going to go back up to file and we're going to create a new file and we're going to put in the dimensions, first of all, for a phone wallpaper. It's always helpful to kind of Google this just to get the dimensions right, because they're always changing. This is giving me 1080 by 1920. So we can leave the width the same and we're just gonna change the height to 1920. We are leaving it in RGB color mode because remember this is for a screen so we don't want to change it. We're just going to add a small bleed to the edge of it just to give us a little bit of space to work around the edge. Um, I'm going to add just a five point bleed to either side of it and then I'm going to click create. So here is my new artboard in my new workspace. And now I'm going to show you how you can create artboards of a different size inside in one document. So we're going to click over here on our artboard tool, which is the rectangle with the little um, like cursor symbol at the side. We're going to open up here and then we are going to click to create a new artboard. So if we click over here on our iPhone, we can see that the width and height are set to 1080 by 1920. If we click on our desktop, we've just kind of estimated it. So I'm going to again get out Google and search. So for a desktop wallpaper, there are a few different sizes. I'm going to go with 
the one that's actually the inverse of our phone wallpaper that is 1920 in width by 1080 in height. So I'm going to drag that one over there. So now we've got our iPhone wallpaper and our desktop wallpaper. The last one I'm going to add to the collection is a tablet wallpaper. And I usually do this off of the dimensions for an iPad wallpaper. Okay. So now I have three artboards in three different sizes to fit an iPhone, a desktop and an iPad. Now I'm going to click back to my cursor tool and I've got my three different artboards in three different file sizes for my wallpapers. So the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my rectangle tool and I'm just going to create a giant rectangle shape that goes over all of the artboards. And it's okay that it's going into spaces that are not on the artboards because when we save our artboards as files for using as wallpapers, it's only going to save sections of our artboard that we see within that red line. So this is my first rectangle. This is going to be my background layer. And then I'm going to just click to duplicate that layer and I am going to move the duplicate slightly down and over because one of them is going to be my background color and then the other one is going to be my pattern. Now I need to bring in my pattern swatch to this new file. So I'm going to go back to the artboard and workspace where I created my pattern and I'm going to select my pattern. I'm going to click command and copy. Now making sure to select the pattern that you actually made into as a rectangle, not selecting the elements of your pattern here that you created the pattern from, because these are going to reset back to the way they looked before you did all that rearranging and tweaking. So what you want to do is make sure you've selected a shape that you already filled with your pattern. Then you're going to click command and copy. Then you're going to go back to your new workspace with your desktop wallpapers and your iPhone wallpaper, and you're going to click paste. And what that does is it's going to add the swatch to this workspace as well. So over here we have got our pattern swatch now as well. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click one of my rectangles, the one that's on the front layer, this is not the background, I'm going to select it. And then I'm going to click my pattern. So it fills this rectangle with the pattern. And now I can kind of see what this pattern is going to look like as an iPad wallpaper, a desktop wallpaper and an iPhone wallpaper. The next thing I want to do is I want to change my background layer because at the moment it's white, which while it looks okay with this pattern, it's a little bit of a plain color to have as a background for a wallpaper. So I'm going to select that other rectangle and then I'm going to select my color picker by double clicking that little square down here where we see our color. And I'm just going to drag it to an off white color. And the last thing I like to do when I am creating wallpapers is add my signature to it. And now my wallpapers and my patterns are ready to export. So I'm going to click file. I'm going to click export, export for screens. And now you'll see that it selects each different one of our artboards and we can see that they're all different sizes. And all we've got left to do is select where we're going to save them and click export artboard. And now we have created a pattern and saved them as wallpapers ready to use. If you want to save your pattern file so that you have a file to come back to, I usually just save that artboard that I was working on as an Adobe file. So clicking save, save as, and saving it in on your computer or in your cloud as an Adobe format. So that is it. That is how I create repeating patterns inside in Adobe Illustrator. I hope that you found this tutorial helpful and maybe that it got you a little bit excited about using Adobe Illustrator or inspired to create patterns of your own using elements from your artwork. I think pattern creation is a really fun creative play activity. I know it's something that I've personally loved doing a lot in my own creative practice recently as a way to kind of push the limits of my artwork and see what it would look like as repeating patterns and then applying those repeating patterns to mock-ups for products or using them to create wallpapers for my Patreon members. Speaking of which, if you are not a Patreon member and you would like to become a member so that you get the wallpapers that I create along with lots of other resources that I share on my Patreon community, you can head to patreon.com forward slash illustrations to find out more about the different tier options and what's involved in each each of them, or you can click the link in the description under this video. If you enjoyed this Adobe Illustrator tutorial, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so already, go ahead and click that subscribe button and turn on that little notification bell so you get reminders 
when new videos go up. If you would like to request another Adobe tutorial for this kind of mini series that I've been doing on Adobe Illustrator, let me know in the comments what you would like to learn, what you would like to troubleshoot inside an Adobe Illustrator, or if there's any particular Adobe Illustrator tools you've seen other creators using that you wanna learn how to use. And if you create a repeating pattern with Adobe Illustrator, I would absolutely love to see it. You can tag me as at Laura Jane Illustrator on Instagram, TikTok, or Pinterest, wherever you like to share your artwork in, with your audience and community. I would love to see the patterns that you create using this really fun repeating pattern tool. If you are completely new to Adobe Illustrator and you want to learn how to vectorize your artwork from Procreate or another app before you start creating patterns so that they can scale and resize inside of your pattern really easily without becoming pixelated, I really recommend that you go ahead and watch this video next where I show you my method for vectorizing my Procreate artwork inside an Adobe Illustrator.